Hello everyone. Last year I presented a pre-release vision of what we thought Julia Hub could become, and this year I'm thrilled to present the live version of that very product, available to be used and robust capabilities of cloud computing for the core of all things Julia. You can explore the system, build packages, register them, and run code in the cloud directly from your browser. The things I'll be looking at today are the individual level features, but we also have enterprise support where you can set up Julia Hub exactly as you need to for your team and business with access to secure data sets and cost centers and private packages. You can find more details on both the things I'm demonstrating today and our enterprise support at juliacomputing.com where we have deep dive webinars that go over these things in great detail. I'm going to log in and we can start looking at what's available today on juliahub.com. You can, of course, launch applications or look at running jobs or simply explore the ecosystem, looking at recently updated packages, details about them, their dependencies and such, or simply searching through the entire ecosystem at large to find the things you need. We have a new exploration section of Julia Hub where you can look at Pluto notebooks that others have published and made public to see what all the fun things that are available in the ecosystem. Here I have some sample code just from the Pluto team themselves to look at all the things that are available and you can see the rendered visual HTML here to explore and find all the great things there is to be found within the Pluto ecosystem. You can of course edit and run these notebooks yourselves directly on Julia Hub. But I want to spend most of today's short demo looking at the in-depth compute features, and in particular, the ability to use large data sets. Here I have a ImageNet data set of the standard subset of images used to train ResNets to do image recognition as a 150 gigabyte data set. And I've registered that with Julia Hub as a versioned data set. It's private to me, but I could potentially make this public to either my team or Julia Hub at large. Where this becomes particularly powerful is how it interfaces with our compute ecosystem, where I can launch a Julia IDE either with a GPU to do some interactive testing of the uh, GPU compute itself, or with a CPU to just do some editing and working with it. So I can start this application to be able to enter into Julia Hub. Once it's available, I can connect to it to dive directly into the VS Code interface. I can make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see, and you can see I'm launched directly into a code folder that has all the work that I've been doing in Julia Hub. Here I'll go into this ResNet demo and find the driver script for doing this training across the ImageNet dataset. And the great thing here is that it is identified directly by name in my code. I can go in and explore this uh, lazily where data sets will just create a listing of that, kind of like a file directory, only directly in the cloud and, and lazily out of core, where I can then index into that data set with a, a path like object and then batch it together and run through that in a distributed fashion. And where this becomes particularly powerful is I can connect back into Julia Hub once again to set up an ad hoc cluster of potentially GPU machines that can churn away at this task in the manner I need to in order to get these results back. We'll automatically authenticate using my username, and then we'll be able to start a distributed job. So in this case, I want to start a distributed GPU job with a beefier V100 GPU and a Julia process for each node. So that way each Julia process gets its own GPU. I can set up the particular number of nodes that I want to work with and use the current file that I'm looking at as my main driver script. Now I can go down, see an estimate of my cost. I know that this will run about three hours or so, and I can start my job. This will run a few checks, make sure that it can run it, and then submit it to the cluster. Now that it's successfully submitted, I can go back to the Julia Hub website, 
go to my compute job list where I can see this exact ResNet demo. And you can go in and see here is that submitted job. And I can even filter back to see other runs of that same job by that same project name. And like any good cooking show, instead of waiting for this to complete, I can go back to a prior run where I have similarly spun up, say, 13 nodes, each with that V100 GPU. You can see some information about the outputs that I've logged for my own note taking. And importantly, I can download the results. This is the saved BSON file of all the network weights, in this case, about 100 megabytes of weights that are available for me to use and explore interactively. Now, what makes this particularly fun is I can go back to our Pluto compute and begin working with Pluto.jl directly here. So we can jump in to a Pluto notebook running on Julia Hub that I've already written that uses the same Julia Hub API to get that same jobs table where we can now filter by the completed jobs within a certain time and date. And then by clicking that radio button, we download the trained weights from that run, load them into our session, and then we need some input to run it against. Well, we can use the same trick that Fonz did from JuliaCon last year and use our webcam. And so take my picture, and that is the input for our model. And as we scroll down, you can see that we run the model. It already thinks that I'm pretty certain a Pomeranian. Of course, there's no matte label here. But you can see this, and there are the model outputs. A great fun way of introspecting this. We can take another picture. And there you can see the weights dynamically update, dynamically change, take another. And you can have a lot of fun working with this. So that is using Julia Hub for Pluto visualization of a large machine learning model. And we think this is just a fun way of working with your data here.